And hi everybody, welcome into the Conestoga Valley High School Gymnasium. The Buckskins are ready to take on the Black Knights in some boys basketball action right before the holiday break. The Black Knights sitting at two and five, the Buckskins at one and five. So this is a crucial game for both sides to keep any semblance of a playoff hope alive. Our producer tonight is Ben Marinas. He's usually my colleague, but we kicked him to the camera tonight. Now, ladies, in yeah, favor of Colson Hunt, my colleague, who plays soccer during the fall, volleyball during the spring. He's got the winner out, so he's up here tonight with me and Colson. This Hemfield team, they are plagued by injuries. They've got two of their starters out for tonight. Connor Axe with a lower ankle sprain. Connor Elslager with a high ankle sprain. And so some of the juniors are going to have to step up, including Brandon Hagel. And Ryan Hilton, who's carried the team all season. First starter, though, is Will Hessinger, the senior. Number five, Ryan Hilton. Ryan Hilton will follow him. Number 10. Hilton leads the team in scoring. Brandon Hagel leads the team in scoring off the bench. He starts tonight, though. Alex Wilkinson, another senior. And Dan Sears, another junior. So this Hemfield. The basketball team has three juniors starting tonight. How do you think that'll impact the Black Knights school? So, you know, yes, they are young, younger than those seniors, but they have experience playing at this level. They've been playing well so far this season. I think they're going to be able to fill up the spots of those injuries pretty easily tonight. All right. Luke Riding Ball, Bill Stone, Austin Worsh, Sawyer, Sawyer Schertzer, easy for me to say, and Ethan Worsh are the starters for the Buckskins. Both these teams got to get their seasons turned around tonight. For Hemfield, it has been a disappointing season. It's been very inconsistent for the Black Knights. They started out very well, but since then have struggled. They are in the midst of losing five of their past six, where the Buckskins have lost their past five since winning their opening game. So something's got to give tonight. We'll have to wait and see what it will be. Yeah, for CV tonight, I think, like you said, Hemfield's been inconsistent all season, but they have the ability to score a lot of points. And so I think a key for the Buckskins tonight is going to be holding them and holding them to few points and also taking their time on their possessions to allow less time for the Black Knights to score. As far as the Black Knights, I think they need to create turnovers when the Buckskins have the ball, and they're taking that time, and they need to finish them. Yeah, we know Hemfield is a very aggressive passing team, and without their top shooter in Connor Axe tonight, they might have to do that more so. Wilkinson gets it off the tip here. Hessinger to Hilton. He's going to start out shooting, and it'll go off the rim. Rebounded by Austin Works. He goes for Scherzer down the field. It's a great job keeping it in bounds. Now, for CV, they're also without their leading score tonight. Bradley Stoltzfus is hurt. So both these teams are pretty plagued by injury right now. So we'll have to see some new faces in there for the Buckskins. As here's Scherzer throwing out to Works. The Works brothers, Austin and Ethan, for the Buckskins. And here's a shot from three off the rim once again. That was by Luke Reidenball. Wilkinson gets the rebound. Here's Hessinger. Passes out to Hilton. Everyone trying to get open the best they can. We know Hemfield, their passing is as a, or their prowess is as a passing team. Ooh, that one gets thrown away there. A little miscommunication between Hessinger yeah. and a teammate there. That's just need to settle down a little bit here in this first quarter. It's important to, to not get too antsy early on. I think both these teams are desperate to break the losing skids that they're on, but uh, well, I agree with you on that one, Colson. Here's Ball. Out to Scherzer. Trying to drive, guarded by Dan Sears, the junior. Back to Wirtz, calling for a screen. Here's Ball. Back to Ethan Wirtz. Ethan Wirtz, number 22, Austin Wirtz, number 14. Both role players on this team. And here's a shot from just inside by Will Stone that doesn't go. The CV with two shots tonight, Hemfield with one. Neither of them are gone to this point. Here's Hessinger, cross court. Sears able to haul it in. Hilton inside to Hagel. And here Coach we walk. He likes to see the passing, but sooner or later you gotta start shooting and 
Well, CB's going to force the turnover. As you were saying, Colson? I was going to say, here we're seeing Hempfield be patient with the ball, keep it moving around. Yeah. But like you said, they do need to get a shot off to win a game. Yeah. There is no shot clock in high school basketball, so that that kind of forced Hempfield's advantage. And here's Wilkinson with a little stutter step drive, and it doesn't go. And he's able, well, he didn't get the rebound, but it went off out of bounds out of a buckskin. So Hempfield keeps possession. But we are scoreless for two minutes here in the opening quarter. And it's Wilkinson. Back to Sears. Back to Wilkinson again, who's looking. Hilton, Kessinger. For Ryan Hilton, he's been on a bit of a cold string lately. Was held to just two points in that, quite frankly, embarrassing loss to Warwick. And was held to single digit points in the loss the other night to Lebanon. But here's Hilton driving to the net. And Kawhi Leonard S bounces through to give Hemfield the first points of the night. Hilton's been in a bit of a funk lately, Colson. They gotta get him going tonight, you think. Yeah, and I think that was the whole goal of that patience on offense was to get him open and him only. They didn't <laughs> they passed up on a lot of shots, and then when he got the ball, he immediately drives in and Brandon goes for the Hagel. layup. Brandon Hagel's been excellent as a junior coming off the bench this season. He's thrust into the starting lineup now with the injuries to both the Connors. He takes a shot from three, doesn't go, but Hilton gets the rebound, setting up Hussinger to put it through. That's great hustle by Hilton to stay with that ball. Colson, I know you were teammates with Will Hessinger on the soccer team. He wasn't a starter at first on this basketball team. There was questions about whether or not he'd even play basketball. Came back out for his senior season. And they really think that if they can get him going, he's going to be a big offensive weapon. He gets the rebound there defensively. Yeah, he's a big body, but he shows great leadership. He was a captain on that soccer team. And he's a very physical player when it comes to soccer, which is not very physical in terms of <laughs> contact and stuff. But uh, Will was able to, he's able to be a presence out on, on the field and on the court here. Yeah, no doubt about that. Hagel's missed shot from three, rebounded by Sears. Here's Hagel back to the net, and it just rolls its way out. But getting the rebound again is Dan Sears, and that's what he's good at, getting those offensive rebounds and putting them down through. Hemfield out to a 6-0 lead early on here against CV. Just what the doctor ordered for the Black Knights. And here's Works driving and putting it through. Austin Works. Gets the Buckskins on the board for the first time tonight. And Wilkinson taking it up, out past Hilton. Inside to Hagel, back to Wilkinson trying to drive. These seniors for Hemfield, as Hessinger takes a shot, and he connects from three. All righty. Hemfield out to a great early start here, and I was just gonna mention Colson, these seniors, you know, they've kind of been overshadowed this year by the play of Hilton and Hagel. But these seniors have had to step up to replace all the players that this team lost last year. So far tonight, they're doing it. Yeah, that's right. We see the passing is perfect from the seniors right now, with the exception of that first possession little hiccup there. It's been solid since then. And it seems that although they're not scoring all the points here, they are like, they're generating the offense. Yeah, they're controlling it very well. This team has six seniors, but two of them are hurt tonight. So they've only got Four active, and two of them on the court right now. Can we pull a Dylan Mellinger on the bench? We'll see if they come in later. For now, though, here's Hilton. Out to Hessinger. Looking to set someone up. Sears calls for it and gets it, and now tries to back his way in before passing out to Hilton. Hagen driving back to Hilton. Or Hessinger again from three. That one just goes off the rim. And goes out. CV will have a chance now to take back over possession. Held to only two points with just 2.13 to go in the first quarter. For Conestoga Valley, that's not necessarily been the norm this season. They've actually put up, they put up 80 points, 83 points in their opening game win against Kutztown. But in this five game losing stretch, they put up a lot of points most of the time, just haven't been able to get the victories. And it's been a somewhat similar story for Hemfield, not quite as explosive on offense. Foul getting to the net there was Will Stone, who will come to the line for the first free throws of the night. 
Yeah, and both these teams, like you said, have shown that they can put a lot of points up on the board. So that just shows the importance of defense for both these teams tonight. And right now, Hemfield's defense is prevailing. Getting ready to see some substitutions ready to come in. Sam Bennett and Jaden Alston, two juniors again, will come in for Hemfield. Meanwhile, for CV, Gabe Matos comes in. The two seniors, Hessinger and Wilkinson, sub out. So it's all juniors out there right now for the Black Knights. As after missing the first one, Stone connects on the second free throw. Cole Overbone is also out there. The sophomore, lone sophomore on this Far City team comes in from Brandon Hagel. So a younger lineup right now for Hemfield in the game. Overball started the season on the JV roster. Got promoted up early on, and he's played a bit of a role off the bench as of late. Gets the ball here off the pass from Bennett inside to Sears, but Sears not able to get it cleanly as he was collected it by Ethan Wirtz. Now Austin works back out the stone from three and give it to him. That's what Hemfield's got to be careful of. CV pulls that trailer with him on the fast break and nobody picked him up. Yeah. Pass out to Austin. Now here's Hilton. Looking for overball. Now back to Austin, back to Sears. Working the outside of the key. Sears drives, gets to Hilton. Sears inside, getting back his way in. He'll try. He gets the rebound, though, off the missed shot. And he gets fouled as well. And non-shooting foul, so he won't come to the line. Sam Bennett will throw it in. 47.6 seconds to go in a 9-6 opening quarter. Bennett looking. It was long, way long for Austin, who has to go all the way to the other side of the court to run it down. Oh, oh, oh. Bennett put a lot of power behind that one, and then misses the layup, so not a great series there for Sam Bennett. And then Overball fouling on Wurtz as Wurtz was driving to the net, so. It's a little sloppy here yeah. from this young lineup. Some of that younger lineup that Kind of forced to play more, as we said, with the injuries. Of course, Connor Elsager got hurt in that effort game we did. Axe got hurt in the most recent game against Lebanon and are out indefinitely. So, in their stead, you got those lower guys, and getting tripped up there was Works, as he had Alston and Sears both over there on him, but no foul called. Hemfield will get possession back. Buckskins go to a bit of a press look here on the full court. Trying to affect the passing game, and Alston bounces it. Two hops it in there to help him. Alston back to Sears, and now back to the CV half of the field for the court. Bennett, looks like they're going to wait and hold for a final shot as Alston out to Bennett, who takes a shot and gets it, it from just inside the line. Sam Bennett to beat the buzzer. And actually, no, they call that as a three, so it'll be 12 to six as he was in midair. Did he jump <laughs> from behind the line? I think he did. Wow, that's... I didn't, see, I didn't see the signal on the court that it was a three, but I believe that's what they call it as. That's good awareness and athleticism from Sam Bennett there. Yeah, 12 to six is the score after one. Black Knights over Buckskins. So Colson, a little bit sloppy that first quarter, but that you can expect that when you have a younger lineup. What can Hemfield use to improve on here in quarter number two? Well, I think what they can improve on is just keeping a nice flow of the system in offense. Right now, there's been batted passes, there's been miscommunications, and a little bit of like just poor passes in general. If they just solidify that and shore that up, and they'll be much more crisp and be able to generate more points. As far as CV goes, I think they really need to improve in rebounding, especially their own defensive rebounds, because half of Hemfield's points right now have come off of offensive rebounds that have gone out for points. So I think CV really needs to make sure they, they're, they're at a height disadvantage overall. They really need to make sure they're physical for those rebounds. And I think you can tell the absence of Bradley Stoltzfus is hurting this CV Buckskins team. He leads the team 
both in total points and in field goals made. And they really haven't gotten too, too many shots off tonight, have the Buckskins. To this point, as we start quarter number two, and it's Alston. Out to Bennett, same lineup remains in. Hilton looking. Pass to Alston. And Bennett gives it away there. And driving and getting tripped up there was Matos. He was in a dead sprint down the court trying to get to the net. And for the second time tonight, CB will bring one to the foul line. So for Hemfield, the last game we did was at home. It was the home opener against Ephrata. So at that point, they won that game. And as the first free throw misses, the Black Knights were sitting at two and two. So you might be wondering, what the heck happened? <laughs> well, what happened was the following night, they played against Lower Dauphin in a Keystone Cup game. Lost that one in nail-biting fashion, 48 to 44. <coughs> Excuse me. Then on Monday, they played against Warwick. And as we said, that was just kind of an embarrassing loss. 42 to 25, poor offensive performance from both sides. And they kind of let Warwick off the hook there. And then on Wednesday at Lebanon, they got back in it only losing that one 51 to 47. And a lot of people felt like they should have won that game. A lot of the players I talked to believed that that was a game they should have won, but let slip away. And so that's how the once two and two Black Knights have now fallen to two and five and are in desperate, desperate need of a victory tonight. 12 to seven after the one made free throw and Hilton gets it to bounce in, call it 14-7. Hilton does a great job of protecting the ball as he drives down the lane. Right there, he had defenders swarming him, but he kept that ball close to his body to ensure the point. It's a nice job by Matos driving to the net, but Sears there to take it away, out to Bennett, out to Austin. Say, Dan Sears has had a nice night so far. <laughs> See if he can keep it going. Sears not really known as, as a shooter or a score on this team. His specialty, though, is getting those rebounds, both offensively and defensively, and using that height of his and that big frame to his advantage. Here's Alston inside to Sears. Again, trying to back his way in. And waved off for a travel on Sears' part. Coach Walk, a little upset with that, said he had the left foot planted. Yeah. I didn't really see it scoop, but I don't have the angle that the ref did, so. Yeah. And nobody here in this CB crowd will uh, will give the refs much grief for that call. As there's both Sears and Bennett in there playing aggressively, trying to get the ball away from Scherzer, who fires from three and doesn't get it. Oh, we and got a fast Hilton break here. Wide open is Sears' layup. Give it to him. Putting it down. And, uh, we thought for a second we were going to see a dunk there, but uh, Sears, maybe the, one of the only ones in this team that would be capable of doing that, but. Decides not to lower the boom there. And you had a fight for it there between Overball and Snavely. Now we've got plenty of guys subbing in here. You got Davian Edmund Green from Hemfield. Hessinger's back in. Huey Pohl is in. And Sears, Overball, and Alston still. Hemfield having to try and get everybody involved tonight with those injuries. Inside is Scherzer. Looking for Wurtz. Scherzer once again. And now he'll turn around and take a shot and it goes off the rim. Rebounded by Edmund Green. Davion Edmund Green. Remember the JV team last year as a sophomore, coming over to Hemfield. Now he's, as a junior, part of the varsity squad. And he too has a big frame that he likes to use to his advantage. Here's Huey Pohl, another one of your teammates, Colson. And uh, Pohl, past two games, he's at two three-pointers. So that's uh, gotten the crowd pretty pumped up as Edmund Green there was fouled, getting to the net. I'm just I'm interested to see how Edmund Green plays in this game because Sears was having success down there as a big man and Edmund Green is a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier than him. So we'll see if he can keep this, this streak of the big men dominating in this game going. That one bounces off there for Edmund Green. 
Edmund Green now 0 for 3 on free throws for the year. Let's see if he can drown his first one and make it 17 to 7. If he can put it through right now, it's 16 to 7. Nope. 0 for 4 for Edmund Green. But again, that's not his thing. You know, shooting is not his prowess. It's driving, getting those rebounds, getting to the net. That's what you expect from a big man, and that's what Edmund Green is able to do pretty well. Here's another shot from Scherzer that goes off, and he's able to run to it, get the rebound, and then Bennett tried to steal it away, but there was nobody home to get the rebound from it as it rolls out of bounds. CV retains their possession. Pretty fast pace game to this point, 440, uh, 4.34 to go and counting in quarter number two. Here's a shot, right in ball. Falling down there after the shot is no good. It's a good job by yeah, Ryden Ball to throw the foul there. Exactly, yeah. And then we'll shoot two. First one doesn't go. Actually, he will shoot three. He was fouled from the three point line, so this is first, uh, second of three. Second one goes. And he's got one more. So, a costly foul there as Ryden Ball got knocked over. Two out of three on the free throws. Here's Cole passing. Bennett just absolutely smothered. It's like a holding call there. And now we shall see. Penfield hasn't been an offensive, very offensive game tonight. We've seen a lot of defense and a lot of steals, a lot of takeaways. Let's see if Penfield can start to get things going. Of course, Hessinger had that one made three early on. Out to Milton. Inside to Edmund Green using that big frame. Here we pull. Thought about me going for his third three-point shot in as many games. Decided not to. Here's Bennett. You have to think Coach Walk put Huey Pohl in there to get open for a three ball. Yeah. As he's just walking around the perimeter pretty much, well, waiting for that, that space. Yeah. Nice rebound by Edmund Green, but he gives it right away. So there were a lot of buckskins there trying to get it over to Pohl. That's a good point, Colson, with Connor Axe, a guy who is nearly an exclusive three-point shooter. Same goes for Sawyer Scherzer. But uh, for Axe, who's a nearly an exclusive three-point shooter, they've got to find somebody to try and replace that for the Black Knights. As in comes Adam Yoder in Scherzer's stead. CB was not quite able to get the rebound there in bounds, so Hemfield takes it over. 16 to 9. That's been the score for a while now. Hemfield trying to break that. Once again, double up on CB's score. Here's Hilton driving, using all of his body, and Edmund Green gets the rebound, but I believe. Saying he pushed yeah. off from behind yeah. there and went over the top. Yeah, so that's costly. Foul there on Hemfield's part. That was calling on Edmund Green. Yeah, the key there is to get your feet set and then jump up instead of running, jumping while you're running and flying into somebody. Yeah. Shot from Works, no good. CB has not been very good shooting from the field tonight. Quick Here, transition for yeah, Hemfield. Quick transition. Nice try by Bennett. Sam Bennett's starting to come on a little bit here in this one. And I think Hemfield, you know, they're just trying to figure out right now, with the injuries they have, what lineups are going to work. And I think they're experimenting a little bit. Maybe that's part of the reason has a little bit to do with this three-game losing skid. As Wurtz takes a shot, doesn't go, rebounded by Yoder, and then taking another shot as right and ball and give it to him. But you got to think Hemfield's experimenting a little bit, trying to find out what works, get the best players out there on the court. Long ball from missing the pole. Back to Bennett. Down to the two minute warning, but no stoppage. 18-12 in this first half. Bennett 
Bennett. To Edmund Green, who drives and trying to draw the foul there was Stone, but didn't get it. So the points stand for Edmund Green, and Bennett able to break that one off. And for the student section to travel here to CB, that gets them pretty hyped up. Yeah, something we're seeing from Hemfield is when they score a basket, they're getting back on defense fast because CV will try to transition fast from points scored against to points scored for. Yes. So Hemfield gets back on defense and tries to get fired up after every basket they have. Right there, it creates a turnover for them. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, Hemfield calls time out there with 119 to go. So, Cole, so I feel like this is kind of game we expected. It's, it's been a little messy at times when you've got two teams that are both trying to deal with injuries and, and put in new players. You can expect that. But uh, for Hemfield, I mean, they, they've, they've tried out some things. They've been able to hold CB pretty quiet from the field tonight. And offensively, it hasn't been an explosion, but they've gotten them at times when they needed to. Now we'll just have to wait and see if that'll be good enough. With an eight-point lead, they will try to preserve into time. Yeah, and with as inconsistent as Hempfield has been over the past three games, you have to make sure that you stay on the gas here, and you, you can't let up with an eight-point lead at halftime. There is plenty of time in this game and plenty more points to be scored. Hempfield wants to make sure they go on their side of the scoreboard. Yeah. All righty. So the final push here before halftime. We'll see. One minute, 19 to go. Has to go throwing into Bennett. Matos. Waiting in coverage, out to Edmund Green, who was able to take a stab at it, pull it in. Here's Essinger, again from three, just off the mark, but Edmund Green uses that big frame to get the rebound. Hilton thought about shooting, then just airmails it, and the Bucs is able to take it away. Down the court, right across, oh. blocked by Edmund Green, whoa! Oh, he was call. fouled on the way, I believe. Or was he? Yeah, I believe he was fouled. <laughs> But nonetheless, what a block, what an effort that time by Davion Edmund Green. Oh my goodness. I know he drew the foul, so that takes away a little bit of the, uh, the luster from it, but man, what an effort. He's making right and ball have to work for these two. He makes the first one, and he makes the second, so. In the end, it's a moot point, but wow, the hustle from Davion Edmund Green. Getting down the court, and then not able to corral the pass, and a riding ball. Again, there's Edmund Green. <laughs> a thunderous block there. That is unreal. Off the backboard. You talk about announcing your presence. This is Davion Edmund Green saying, all right, if somebody's got to step up, it's going to be me. <laughs> Here's Bennett to Hilton. This student section is going bananas right now for Hemfield. As Bennett is fouled there on the holding call. Yeah, Edmund Green didn't like the foul call on the first one, so he said, all right, fine, I'll wait till he throws it up and then I'll block it off the backboard. <laughs> oh, man. That is something else. And in all that excitement, we're down to the final 23 seconds. As here's Hilton to Hessinger. Bennett. I just can't believe that block. That was insane. You don't see that too, too often in high school basketball, especially with guys with that much height. Here's Bennett to Paul, who is blanketed but gets away. Pass inside. Good feed inside. Yeah, wow. Nice job by Paul there, setting up Hessinger. And that is how half number one comes to an end. Wow. There's some excitement for you. And the Black Knights is like a 22 14 advantage into the locker room. Man, oh man, Colson, uh, early impressions from what we've seen from both these teams so far? Well, I think we're seeing some aggression from both sides, some scrappiness from both sides, and hustle from both sides. 
Uh, Hemfield just needs to settle down a little bit more on offense, and I think even defense at times because they get so excited after they score the basket yeah. that they're kind of all over the place, and CV stays in system, and they find open space, and they can put up easy shots. Hemfield can't allow any free shots. Contested shots are fine. Free shots are not. All righty. Well, we will take that to quarter number three. Man, that was, a, that was a pretty exciting end to the half there. Hemfield up 22 to 14 on the road in CV. Producer Ben Marinas, Kali Colson Hunt, gang's all here, and we'll be back in just a few minutes for half number two. And hi, everybody. Welcome back to the second half against the Conestoga Valley Buckskins, the Hemfield Black Knights, up 22 to 14. Pretty exciting end to the first half we had from the Robert W. Rill Gymnasium, and we will see. Black Knights can keep going, finally snap this three-game losing skid. Meanwhile, the Buckskins are trying to snap a five-game losing skid. My colleague tonight is Colson Hunt, producer is Ben Marinas. Colson, uh, first half, it was a little sloppy at times. It wasn't always pretty, but Hemfield was able to get a good amount of points on the board and at least put up a decent lead against the Buckskins. So what do they got to do here in half number two? I know I already mentioned this earlier in this broadcast, but I really think Hemfield needs to get crisper on offense because they are having success driving down the lane and getting short two-point buckets. But I think they need to be crisp enough that they can free up some of these outside shots because they do have players like Will Hessinger, Huey Pohl's been in there a little bit, and Ryan Hilton, of course, can all shoot the long ball. So I think they need to be crisper to free up those long shots. Alice Wilkinson drives to the net, and he will get the first points of half number two. Wilkinson, one of the seniors, has been held relatively quiet most of the year. He gets on the board for the first time tonight. Right it ball to Scherzer. Back to Austin Works. The two student sections scoring back and forth, but right now on the court, it's Hemfield is getting knocked over with Stone and Wilkinson, everybody fighting for it. Yeah, Eagle in there fighting. Riding ball, and ultimately, possession will remain with the Buckskins. So for the Buckskins, I know we've mentioned a couple times now that injury though to their leading scorer, Bradley Stoltzfus, similar to the injuries Hemfield has with Connor Axe and Connor L. Slogger has now was taken away. Wilkinson back to Hessinger. And you could just tell offensively, they're not very crisp tonight, obviously, looking at the scoreboard, only 14 first half points. They gotta dig themselves out of this hole against a Hemfield team. And if there's one thing we know about Hemfield, it's tough to play from behind against this team. So they're gonna have to try and do that here. Singer to Hilton. Hemfield not in too much of a hurry right now, which is kind of the mantra for their offense as is, but it makes sense being up by 10 right now in the second half. Pass inside to Sears. And here's Hagel! And, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. That wasn't a three ball, but that was an outside shot set up by a bunch of passing and rotating from Hemfield and just playing clean. Brandon Hagel has been this season's breakout star on the Hemfield basketball team. Having to step up as a junior. Last year was on JV. His first year at varsity, it's been pretty well. He's the third leading scorer on this team. He'll be second after the night because of Axe's injury. Only behind Ryan Hilton. Hemfield calls a timeout there to uh, save a possession. Yeah. Crucial there. This point. The other thing about uh, CB Buckskins, we talk about multiple sport athletes. Well, Bradley Stoltzfus was not only this team's uh, one of their starters in the basketball team in their highest score, he was also their starting quarterback for their football team as uh, my football guru to the right of me, Ben Marinas, just informed me. So uh, he's been busy, and that's the case, obviously. I know Colson, you play multiple sports. Ben, I know you were planning on playing multiple sports. But uh, a lot of these athletes, they're, they may only play one sport at a time, but they're playing two or three sports a year. Sometimes that can take a toll on your body. As here's Hilton from three. No good. here to get any offense going. We've seen Sawyer Scherzer has been the guy. He's taken a lot of shots from three tonight. I don't think he's connected on any of them, though. But 
and they start to get him going. The other guy in there has been Luke Rydenball. The offense for CV this quarter has been really sloppy with just simple oh. passing and catching like that right there yeah. between the legs. That's not a good pass or, I mean, it, it wasn't a great pass to catch, but it, it wasn't even a very good effort to catch that pass. Yeah, that went right through Ethan Wurtz's legs there. Now Singer, trying to motion people to go. The shirts are all over him going behind the back. How did Essinger get out of that? Setting up Sears. Back to Essinger, outside, Hakel. Open look for a sec, now back to Wilkinson, who will drive and get fouled. On the way there, shooting foul. And A. Wilk comes to the line, shooting two. Wilkinson, 56% from the line this season, five of nine. Might have gotten to him there. He misses his first attempt. And not good there either, but Sears gets the rebound. <laughs> to quiet everyone down again. <laughs> Sears Hilton out to Hessinger, out to Hagel. Sears trying to back his way in, can't do it, so he'll flip it out to Hessinger. Wilkinson, Hilton. Back to Hessinger, who drives. Hilton thought about the corner three, passed it up. Here's Wilkinson again, faking to go up. That's the third time this quarter Wilkinson has passed on an open shot. I think he needs to start taking them. Right for it, and they take down to the ground, wrestling style for it. You got Wilkinson in there fighting with Ethan Kurtz. Or Ethan Wurtz in there. And that was a 50-50 uh, a jump ball if you've ever seen one in basketball, and it was Wurtz who won it. So we have seen a combined six points in this third quarter so far as we're coming up on halfway through it. Wurtz. It's foul by Hagel going to the net, able to draw it there. That is Hagel's fourth foul of the game. That's the one thing for Hagel we've seen. He's a very good shooter, but I'm pretty sure he also leads the team in fouls as well. At least he has in the, the two times we've gotten to take a look at him. He'll set out for Sam Bennett. The first free throw went, so we the second one. So it's 26 18. Here's Bennett. It's Asser. With Wilkinson open across the left side. And now Essinger inside. Good nice movement. Pass. Great pass. movement. Yeah. Nice passing there inside the paint. Now they work outside. tonight. But the difference tonight is that is up on the scoreboard. And Sears puts it down. And that was, that was a fantastic offensive possession for Hempfield there. They showed every look they could on the court. Ooh, good shot there. Yeah, nice shot from three. That's the one thing CB has been able to do relatively well tonight is shoot from three. to Wilkinson. So Messinger and Sears able to take it away. And There's getting out of the rebound and then getting the foul. CV really having a tough time right now stopping Daniel Sears with his offensive rebounds. They really can't, they really don't even have a chance on some of those jump balls down under the basket. Go. That last 
last three, by the way, was by Will Stone. He stays in, now subbing in his Matos for Scherzer. That field's free throw shooting has not been great tonight, and that continues. Sears, no good. 0 for 2 now. Sears is only 22% though from the line coming into the night, so it's not a huge surprise. Here's Matos. Trying to turn his way around. Taking another shot and getting it again is Stone. Making it two in a row on two offensive possessions for Will Stone. And it cuts the deficit to four. Penfield just needs to settle in here. They're starting to get away from that crispness they needed. Yeah. Kessinger able to corral a high pass. Hilton had an open look, passed it up to pass inside of Bennett, and he's rejected by Stone, but Bennett gets oh, it back. Oh, way to stay with it. Bennett gets it back from worse, and then that one goes off of Sears. And a wild possession there. CV comes away with it. But it was Will Stone who originally got there to break it up, and what a past couple of minutes he's having. Two made threes, and then he started everything to kind of discombobulate that possession for him. Well, there's Bennett again trying to cut it off and get in there. He has been all over the ball tonight. But that time was not successful in getting the steal. Works. Take it and try. Try to back up. Oh, good block. Blocked, blocked rejected by Sears. CV retains possession, but what a block by Dan Sears. Ethan Works was driving to the net. Blocking game's been on point tonight. <laughs> hasn't, all, it hasn't really worked yet, but they've at least put the effort in. Nice move by Matos on Hessinger. And here's a shot by Austin Works, rebounded. I believe Stone is able to come down with it. Ethan Wirtz goes to Austin Wirtz. Stone, another corner three. That time misses. And Wilkinson is there for the rebound. So Stone's hot streak comes to an end. Sears inside Hessinger trying to get there and put a little too much behind it as he was trying to get the elevation to get to the net. And here's Austin Wirtz getting fouled on his way to the net. That's a shooting foul, another one for Enfield. That's the one position tonight where the Bucks kids have had the advantage is both getting to the line and shooting from the line. That's the look they're looking for. Hilton's got to at least hit something there. Hilton's not been very short, or not been a very good shooting tonight. Been a little off. Let's see though. He's still got time to rebound it. Got one more quarter left, plus about 40 seconds. Here's Hilton inside. Wilkinson bounce to Sears. Looking out. Bennett driving, and he's fouled on the way. By Garrett. Just checked in the game, did Funk. And he's guilty of the foul there, so let's see if Hemphill can get going from the line tonight. They do. Here's Bennett to blow the advantage to five. Sawyer Scherzer will come back in, as will Adam Yoda. Crowd 
Illinois gets to him, knocks both of them through. 30, 24, coming to the end of quarter number three. In a must-have game for both of these teams. As we've just crested past the one-third mark of the season. And that one taken away by Houghton. So Ryan Hilton, he's saying, if I can't do it offensively, then I'm at least going to contribute defensively. That's exactly Now he's got right. another shot. Instead of taking the open three, he drives and doesn't get there. Fight for it. Scram on the ground gets it away to search. So that's how the quarter will come to an end. And Colson, I can't help but wonder, you know, Hilton, he struggled from the three-point line tonight. That seems like a look he usually takes. Didn't take it there to decide to try and drive. You gotta wonder if that's a confidence thing. Maybe thinking, hey, my shot's a little off tonight, so I'm gonna just try and get the two instead of the three. Instead, he got zero. Yeah, he passed up on the open look, but honestly, I think that's an okay decision because CV has shown that they're pretty weak down on the baseline, and so he went for a baseline drive and put up a legitimate shot that was that, that was a good shot and almost had a chance at an offensive rebound there. Because you figure if you at least hit the rim, that gives your that gives Sears a chance to go get an offensive yeah. rebound, which he's been doing fantastically tonight, and that's how a lot of Hemfield's points have come. Yeah, very true. 30-24. Entering the fourth, the Buckskins trying to snap a five-game losing skid. The Black Knights trying to snap a five out of six losing skid. I don't know, maybe we're the good luck charm. <laughs> the maybe. only win in that time was when we were there, albeit playing against the winless Ephraim Mountaineers. But uh, this is just, these are just the games Hemfield has to have. Their schedule gets a lot tougher from here. If they can't win this game, they might as well kiss the playoffs goodbye because they're going to have a very hard time, as is even digging out of the hole, but especially if they lose tonight. Here's Hill to Hessinger. Inside, nice pass from Bennett to Wilkinson, and then a great pass from Wilkinson to Sears. Good feeds all around from Hemfield to set up the Sears easy layup. Yeah, he's having a big night with those layups. Schertzer, Yoder, Matos, able to juke his way inside, stay in bounds, scope that end line, and Schertzer again from three, off the rim, rebounded by Wilkinson. Bennett, back to Wilkinson, back to Bennett, back to Wilkinson. Playing some hot potato, trying to get it up the court. Bennett, nope, open for a sec, they keep passing. Inside, Wilkinson can't get it as Sears was trying to set him up. Now it's Matos down the court. And another corner three, and this time Schertzer finally connects on it. He's been going for that all night long, and finally from three is good. 32 27 with 6.53 to go, and timeout called by the Buckskins. Yeah, Sawyer Schertzer, although he hasn't shown it that much tonight, is a very good three point shooter when open. In warm-ups, he hit five in a row, and then I think missed one, and then went and hit another four in a row. So you don't want to give him the open look, which is exactly what happened there. But as we've seen, when he's contested, he is not as proficient from the three-point line. This is sort of the second game for Scherzer that he's been in. He had one three in his prior debut. He's got one three tonight. And, uh, as I said, with Stokes who's being out, they've had to try and replicate that offense the same way the Black Knights have had to do it without El Slogger and Axe. So now it's just a matter of who can burst through here the best. 653 to go. Head coach Brad Hur trying to get his team back in it for the Buckskins. And head coach Danny Walk, the experienced one on the other side, trying to turn this season around. To Hessinger, to Bennett. All the way across to Sears, who Colson Hunt esque volleyballs it back to Hilton. Hilton to Hessinger, back to Hilton. Trying to find his way open, back inside of Sears. It bounces to Wilkinson. CB's been putting a lot of pressure on those passes tonight. They've gotten some steals off of it. Brandon Hagel's getting ready to come back in the next opportunity, but until then, here's Hilton. Again, from three, passed it up. Here's Nessinger. 
and it's taken away. Matos got in front of it. Here's Scherzer taking it back the other way. Outside, Austin works. Back to Yoder, to Scherzer. To Matos. To Wurtz. There's Stone. Now it's CB's turn to play the passing game. Works, drives, gets there over Houghton. That's a tough shot made, and now CV's within three. Yeah, back to a one possession game this is. CV has been down the entire night, but they're as close as they've been since the first quarter. Great pass from Wilkinson to Hill, but a bad one there from Bessinger as he was trying to get to Sears. Hagel comes in for Wilkinson. The possession, it's a one possession game. This is a big defensive position, possession for Hemfield right now. Yes. Ride and goal. Trying to look for somebody. Finds Wartz. Shirts are again to tie it. Give it to him. That's a great shot. Well, we're seeing what we saw in Ross now. Shirts was connected on his last two. Now Hemfield's got to respond. Tie game with 439 to play. Here's Ellen taking a shot off the rim, but rebounded by a singer. Back to Pettit after all that. Can Ryan Hilton get going? Or can somebody else pick up the slack? Here's Bennett. Back to Hilton. To Hagel. Bennett. Pessinger. Hilton again. Inside. Hagel. Blanketed. Hilton. Trying to work the back line. He's got it stolen away by Matos, who gives CB the first win of the night. That's a smart call. Timeout there from Coach Walk. The crowd is loud here. Hempfield's playing very erratic right now. It's time to settle them back down and start playing the offense that they had been playing for the first three quarters. Yep. Man, oh man. For Hempfield, they were up by, I believe, as much as 10 at one point. And we said they're a tough team to play from behind. But CB has answered the call. It's not been a high scoring shootout by any stretch. It's a 34-32 game with a tick under four minutes to play. But, they'll but either of these teams will take it any way they can get it at this point. And if CV can come from behind and win this one, that would take all the air out of Hemfield sales heading into the holiday tournament. And here we're seeing an issue that we've seen before from Hemfield is the inability to close out a game. They've lost a couple, they've lost two of the last three that were very close, and they had a chance at the end to steal one, but here, and you see, they had the game the whole way up through three and a half quarters, and here at the end, they're gonna have to try to steal one now from CV, who's been playing down the entire game. It's far from over though, let's see. Bennett. Looking for Sears. Hagel. can find their way open and maybe get the next points. Messinger to help. Bennett, look at CV play a great defense right now. The Matos gets turned around. Out to Messinger. Long possession for Hemfield. Can they get anything out of it? Inside, Sears and holding call there against the Buckskins the possession alive. Man. <laughs> He's been it all the way back to Hessinger. They'll try it again. Sears, back in. Looking. Hagel. To Bennett. To Hessinger. Sears. Gets there to tie it. That's a good strong body up there. They were waiting for that one. Now, three minutes to play. Works fouled on the 
his way there. He was did a nice job selling it, but he was trying to get to the net. That foul is the fifth of the night on Hagel. And with it, Coach Walk will bring Hagel out in favor of the senior, Alex Wilkinson. And now CB with a chance to take the lead back. 2.53 to play. And putting it through to take the lead. With one shot remaining. Penfield has to score a bucket here and then come up, most importantly, with a defensive stop. Yes. Got to find a way to get those turnovers defensively. And Hilton gets tripped up. Colson, I know that Coach Walk has a lot of faith in his starters that he has in there. But I almost start to wonder, needing a defensive takeaway, do you consider bringing in some of your guys of bigger size? Guys like Cole Overball and Davion Edmund Green, or do you just trust the brand you have right now? I think you have to go with the brand you have now because CV is a speedier team and you bring in those big bodies, yes, you'll be good down in the paint, but will you be able to keep up with them around the perimeter, which is how they got back into this game? Hilton yeah. able to hang on here, passing over three, off the mark. The There's another offensive rebound for Hemfield. So important in this game right now. Hessinger trying to take the lead, couldn't get it. They'll have another chance. Here's Bennett driving, pass. Wilkinson, Hessinger, back to Bennett, back to Wilkinson who drives. Bennett is fouled on his way to the net. And he'll come to the line with a shot to tie it. Hemfield's getting the looks, but they can't quite finish without getting fouled. Gotta make that work for it now. That's the mark. So now to bring it to Walk. And a Sawyer Scherzer, the hot hand, the shooter, comes in for Adam Yoder. Here's Bennett. That time nails it. One point game. 2 minutes to play as it's works. Not getting there. There they get that defensive stop you were so hoping for Colson. <laughs> they needed that. Within one. Bennett, Hilton, Hessinger. I say you have to try Daniel Sears. Try to see if you can get him open under the bucket. Bennett is open on the other side, trying to drive his way to the net again. Hessinger. Still, Taking a look. Still. Bennett with a shot, trying to get outside, and Wilkinson can't quite corral it. He says that one's on him, but Bennett just led him a little too far there to the outside, and Bill takes time out. I know Wilkinson is, is taking that one, but that would have been a tough grab to make. Just right along the perimeter there. But that was not what the Black Knights needed. Now they got to find a way, once again, to step up defensively. Coach Walk telling his starters, I can imagine, just stay in it. He's a very upbeat, very positive head coach who values a lot of hard work. These boys are gonna have to dig deep now to try and snap this three game losing skin. <laughs> Meanwhile, for Brad Hur, I'd imagine the message is much the same to the Buckskins. 81 seconds in a one point game. Scherzer, who as of late has been the sharpshooter, gets it out to Wurtz. He'll take it across. And remember, there's no 
shot clock, so CB can eat a lot of time up. So Hemfield's got to keep the pressure on. Here's Wurtz driving, uh, gets past him to the layup. That is not what Hemfield needed, was a defensive gaffe there. Yeah. Under a minute and a three point game. Here's Wilkinson driving, trying to power, gets to Sears though, and Sears able to connect. Hemfield takes another timeout. Off the rebound by Sears, and I'll tell you, if Hemfield wins this game, Daniel Sears might not have the game winning point, but he is maybe going to be the most influential reason. He has been all in the paint tonight. And so we trade blows, but for Hemfield, now it seems like they've got to crisp it up a little bit defensively. They let Wurtz go right by him there, get it back to a three point game. We will have to see. This is an electric atmosphere in CV. Neither of these teams, even though they both sit at one and five for the Buckskins, two and five for the Black Knights, neither of these teams nor these fan bases have quit on the season. There's still a lot of games to be played. That there are. But this is a crucial one. Crucial one for both sides. <clears throat> They get a cross. Coach Walk, I think, wanted a 10 second violation there. It was very close. So Matos to get it across the big court line. CV taking a lot of time. Hemfield's got to get it back. Under 30 seconds. And they foul him there. It'll be one and one upcoming. As we're into the bonus for the first time tonight, and this is crucial for Sawyer Schertzer to first make this first free throw because if he doesn't make the first one, he may not get a second chance. Scherzer, off the rim, Bennett gets the rebound. Looks like Hemfield might have one more chance here to take the lead now. Inside 20, Bennett to Hilton. Two wins the game, Hessinger. And timeout taken by Hemfield with 12.4 seconds to play. Black Knights have the possession. Oh, buddy. <laughs> I don't know about you, Casey, but I'm over here white knuckled right oh, now. Oh, boy. <laughs> we got a nail biter here. Well, these are the moments you live for, not just in high school sports, not just in college sports, in all sports. To come down to the end, can Hemfield pull it out? Can CB get a stand? Regardless, it's going to be fun. <laughs> All right, Colson. 12.4 seconds to go. What's the strategy you're calling right now if you're head coach Stanley Walk? Right now I'm calling a play where you have a couple passes around the perimeter, and they have to be spot on. There, there can be no error in these passes. And you're going to have Daniel Sears running back and forth down at the baseline. Get him open and have him go for the layup. Field still got time. They can pass it around the perimeter a little bit, but they don't got all the time in the world. So it will come to this. 12.4 seconds. One point game. And we're about to find out. Can Hemfield draw it up? Or can CB hang on and get the comfortable high grip? Bennett, Hessinger, Wilkinson, looking, clock running down, Hessinger for the win, off the rim, Hill gets the rebound to win it! That's it, that's the buzzer, oh, that's man. time! Ryan Hill wins it for Hemfield off the rebound! And the Black Knights have stunned the Buckskins! What an Whoa. athletic shot from Ryan Hilton right there to redeem himself after a struggling second half and win the game for the Black Knights. Big time players make big time plays in big time moments. And Ryan Hilton just made the game winning play off the missed three by, uh, by Hessinger. But Hilton 
gets the rebound to win it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Black Knights go to three and five, while the Buckskins drop their sixth straight in absolutely incredible fashion. Wow. Colson, I... <laughs> <laughs> what do you say to I don't final know. thoughts on the night? Uh, I thought it was, overall, I would say pretty strong from both teams. I thought CV played a phenomenal fourth quarter oh, to put them back in the game. And really, they had the momentum there. And just a great shot from Ryan Hilton just ruined it. But Hempfield played a great first three quarters to keep a, keep a nice cushion for them. And then they dealt with the pressure that they had at the end and finished a game that they desperately needed to finish. They had to finish that game, and they did. Sometimes you just gotta go to your best playmaker. Hessinger took a shot, couldn't connect. But Ryan Hilton, the sure-handed star, was right there. And the Hempfield Black Knights have won it. In Conestoga Valley, they come on the road. Their next game will be the holiday tournament. They will face Lower Marion one week from tonight. And that's going to be a tough matchup right there. <laughs> it there are will some, be. There are some they'll very be back at home after this rough road stretch. And the Black Knights unbelievably win it. 39-38, the final score. You've been watching Boys Basketball on HSD TV 7. What a game it was for my producer, Ben Marinas, colleague, Coach and Hunt. I'm Casey Kreider, saying so long from a wild one where the Black Knights just eke one out over the Buckskins here on Friday night under the lights.